Oh hey, let's do some swatching. So this is just gonna be a quick rapid fire video. I was going to start a new series slash challenge today, but I feel like it'd be better to start on Monday. So I decided that at the last minute and did not have like a proper video for today. So I figured I would just do a continuation of last week's unboxing. Let's get into it. So this one is called Windsor & Newton Payne's Gray. It is one of the, my favorite colors, but I am working on replacing all of my Windsor & Newton colors. This one's not so bad, but it's kind of hard to work with. As you can see, I kind of struggle with it. All of the Windsor & Newtons are kind of like this. Next we have Turner Burnt Umber. This used to be a Windsor & Newton Burnt Umber, but I do find that I like Turner better and they're reasonably priced. So most of my Windsor & Newtons will be replaced by Turner. Next we have Windsor & Newton Burnt Sienna. Uh, not much to say about this color. I'm not a big fan of it, but it is essential for skin tones. So you kind of need to have it in your palette, especially if you want to do like tan or dark skin tones. Next we have Daniel Smith Perlin Green. I find greens relatively easy to mix, but sometimes you just want to treat yourself to a vanity color, I call them, just a color that like you could mix, but why bother? This is a really nice one. I love that it's muted and kind of earthy, really into this vibe. Phthalo Blue. This is one of the Daniel Smith water Watercolor Essentials set, so it's like a cool blue. I love basically all phthalo, so this is on my banger list. <laughs> Another from the watercolor essential set from Daniel Smith is Quinacridone Rose. This is a cool red and it's very similar to my Windsor and Newton Permanent Rose, which is also in this palette. I didn't really pay attention to how close they were in color. Once I'm out of permanent rose, Windsor Newton, I will swap it out with something else. I'm looking forward to swapping all of those out. I'm just not a big fan of the Windsor Newton Cottons anymore, so that's that. And I really like this color. It's great for mixing all sorts of pinks and purples, and you know, you can. It's just an essential, which is why it's in that set. <laughs> Another from the watercolor essential set. This is Daniel Smith Hansa Yellow Light. I don't like yellow. I like cool yellows the absolute least, but it's an essential that you need to mix other colors. That's basically it. <laughs> Next we have Windsor and Newton Viridian Hue. This used to be one of my absolute favorite colors. I still really like it, but I'm weaning off of the Windsor and Newton, so yeah, we'll, we'll replace it soon. <laughs> Next is Turner Turquoise Blue. This is a really pretty color. I just wish it was a little stronger. It's very transparent. I might try mixing it with some white gouache to see if I can give it some punch, because I really like this one. This is Windsor and Newton Cerulean Blue. I feel like this one is redundant a bit. I have a lot of blues in my palette. I don't know if I need this, but I like it. Windsor & Newton Cobalt Blue. I love Cobalt Blue. It makes the best purple. I will keep my eye out for a different brand though to see what else is out there. This is just not a great one. This Windsor & Newton Indigo drives me crazy. Like look at this struggle. Ugh. It's not good. I, this is going to be the first one to get replaced as soon as the pan's empty. Also this is a Fabriano sketchbook. Like it's buckling. It's just this was a messy moment. <laughs> Turner Maroon. I love this color, hence the little heart. It's the latest one that I've bought and it's usually the latest one I buy is my favorite. I've been using this everywhere for everything and I love it. Next is Daniel Smith Quinacridone Coral. This is a really nice bright warm red. It's good for skin tones and probably flowers. I only paint portraits for the most part so I use it quite a lot. Next is Daniel Smith Quinacridone Gold. This is kind of like a yellow ochre replacement. Good for skin tones and earthy things. I like it. Another from the Daniel Smith Watercolor Essential set is French Ultramarine. This is a warm blue, which is really nice for grays and water and rocks and all kinds of landscapey things, but I just love French Ultramarine in general. Next up again from the Watercolor Essential set is Daniel Smith Pyrrole Scarlet. 
This is another warm red, and it's very similar to quinacridone coral, which is good for skin tones and flowers. I keep recommending the same things. When I run out of this tiny five milliliter tube, I'm probably going to replace it with something else, but it's a really nice color. And the last one from the Daniel Smith Watercolor Essentials is New Gamboge. This one almost feels yellow ochre to me it's quite rich and I quite like that as much as I don't like yellow this is a really nice one and here we have my Winsor & Newton permanent rose which I said was really similar to my Quinn rose from the Daniel Smith set so I'm probably going to swap this out at some point Next is my one and only Holbein color, Lavender. I love this color, I use it all the time. It works really well to tone down high saturated colors. I use it a lot in blonde colors. It works really well for that. Banger, love it. Another one for the banger list. This is Daniel Smith Moon Glow. This is another all-rounder where you can just kind of jam it in anywhere. It works really good to like darken colors without making them all the way black. It just gives it a rich, neat, purpley color. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I use it everywhere. <laughs> Next is Daniel Smith Influence Silver. I always get sidetracked by iridescence and metallics. I've got a bunch of fine tech palettes. I'm obsessed. This one's really cool because the Influence ones are meant to glaze over top of another color and it looks gorgeous. I've tried it on some skin tones and I'll be using a lot of this. So when drawing this little chart, I completely forgot about my Daniel Smith Green Gold. This is a really cool color and um, I haven't used it a ton yet. I do use it for a specific skin tone. Um, I haven't drawn this character yet, but I will. And uh, yeah, not much else to say. It's just a really nice, cool, bright, mossy green. So this is the card that actually goes inside my palette that I made. I've got warm and cool red, yellow, blue in the middle. I have my blues and purplies on the right and then my skin tones and earthies on the left. So that's my new palette swatched out. I'm loving it so far, and some pans are almost done and need refilling. That has never happened before. I meant to do this swatching in the last unboxing video, but it got pretty long with me opening all those silly brushes that I should have cut down. The video did really well though, which is funny and great. <laughs> I've never done unboxing or swatching videos, so I learned some things. Anyway, I hope that was more helpful and will accompany the boxing video nicely. Let me know your thoughts or color suggestions in the comments. If you're into art, world building, vlogs, and art business type stuff, hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. I upload every Friday afternoon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!